Today we're going to look at three reasons why I think it's never too late to start an art career or a YouTube art channel. There were a couple of things that made me think about doing this video for you today. One of them was that a few weeks ago a friend of my husband's mentioned to him that he was thinking of starting a YouTube channel but he didn't have anybody he knew who had a YouTube channel because he just assumed they were all younger people. And when my husband said, well, I had a YouTube channel and asked me to give him a few tips on where to start, um, it got me thinking about people of our age starting the channel and maybe needing a little bit of help. Also, I did a video last week um, where I kind of touched on this. I was, as I was going along, it occurred to me that, you know, it's perhaps something that people want to talk about, getting into a career at our age. And the other thing was that I happened to see on YouTube that actually a lot of the bigger, more successful channels, quite a big proportion of those were YouTubers in their 40s and 50s. So it's not just YouTubers who are younger that are on YouTube. Um, we think of social media as being saturated by younger people, whereas actually there are a lot of older people both watching videos and producing them. So it's good to know that because when you're making videos, you really want to have it in your mind who your audience is and who you're talking to. And if we look at my demographics, a lot of the people that are on my channel are over 60. Not all of them, I've got a very wide age group, but there's quite a lot of people in that age group and it's nice to know who you're talking to when you're looking down the camera and visualise those people. Before I go on to talking about those three reasons why I think we're really well placed to start a new career at our age, um, I want to talk a little bit about how I got to where I am now because it's something I've perhaps not touched on very much on this channel. I'm often asked by people when I'm doing art and craft fairs and things like that, people ask me about when I started painting and when I started selling my artworks and did I go to college and do it at school. The answer to that is I didn't do any art at school. Um, in those days we were sort of encouraged to do the things that we were best at and that we got the best grades at. So not necessarily the things I enjoyed the most but the things I got the best grades at and that was science and so I did all the science subjects at school and didn't do anything with my art. However, I did do a lot of creating because my grandmother was very artistic as were my aunts. So myself and my cousins were brought up um, always making things, drawing things, um, you know, every, in every kind of fashion, sewing, knitting, baking. We were encouraged to do all that and we did do a lot of creative things. And I think if you're an artist, you're creative. If you're a creative person, you're creative with all different things. And that's also why YouTube is a very good thing because if you enjoy creating your artworks, you're also going to perhaps enjoy a side of creating the, doing the filmmaking because it's another creative process. So there's all things that work together. So I didn't start uh, by doing art at college. So to begin with, uh, when I left school, I worked in a laboratory and then I got married and had children and stopped working. So, and since then I've done various careers. I've had, I did have a garden centre for a time here on the farm for about 10 years. Um, and then as the children got older, um, I did start going to evening classes doing art there, learning to paint and draw, which is something I really wanted to do. And as the children got older and they got to that stage where they were leaving school and going to university, that's when I decided I wanted to do my art full time. So I gave up the garden centre to put all my efforts into doing my art full time. So I did a lot of online learning and I did um, a course with the London Art College but I also did lots of night school and things like that as well. So that's where I came into it and I started very gradually first selling my work at, lo at um, my local village exhibition and going from there. That was the starting point. And then a couple of years later starting YouTube. So uh, I started YouTube because a friend asked me about a technique I was using with Brusho and she wanted to see how I did it. Um, and that's how I got going. It wasn't something really planned, but I really enjoy it because I enjoy that creative process. So that was just to say a little bit about where I'm coming from with this. Um, and you learn along with your YouTube channel. So as your channel grows, you're learning and hopefully both your artwork and your videos are get, getting better. Excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat. Getting better as time goes by. Now something a little bit related to this, but actually 
uh, not related but anyway this morning I was at the hairdressers and um, I found it quite amusing I like to have a chuckle to myself now and again and there was a lady came in after me and she was a couple of seats up and she, she was discussing with the stylist what colours she was going to have in her hair and she said to the stylist well you choose do whatever you like she said as long as you don't give me a shock and make me all grey and then she turned around and looked at me and my grey hair and was very embarrassed obviously she because she thought she'd offended me but I was just laughing about it and uh, it was became quite funny because she then started backpedalling and said oh it's a lovely shade and all this kind of thing so it uh, I don't know why I'm telling you that it just amused me it's all part of this getting older thing isn't it and uh, you might have noticed I've stopped dyeing my hair I've decided that I'm just going to let nature do its thing so that was quite amusing she was trying to you know when you're in a hole stop digging she was trying to backpedal on what she said and I was having a bit of a laugh to myself about that so right let's get to these three points so the first thing is that we have I think more experience and patience obviously we've got more experience because of our years and but I think we've got more patience too and I think you need that patience to grow a YouTube channel it's not a get-rich-quick scheme um, you know there is jam tomorrow but you might have to wait a little bit for it I think perhaps younger people are looking younger youtubers are looking for that get rich quick thing um, and I think that's perhaps why some channels fail is because they try and then they give up I think we've got that thing where we won't give up we'll just carry on doing a little bit and growing things gradually um, and we've got experience from other things that we can bring into our art career and our YouTube channel so like I said earlier um, the things that I've done in the past having the garden center doing bookkeeping talking to people years ago I did public speaking as well so I've learned all that kind of thing can go into your YouTube videos all the practical stuff like learning how to use your camera your lighting your uploading and all that kind of thing you can easily learn from YouTube looking up videos on those subjects there's always going to be somebody there teaching you how to do that and we're never too old to learn so I think we've got the patience and the experience needed to put into a YouTube channel and our experience is also the things that we can talk about to make things interesting to the people that are watching us so that's the first thing so the second thing and I think it is still quite related is that we don't have the haste of youth and that we perhaps have a little bit more time for ourselves some of you might be like me what we call empty nesters so we've had our perhaps a career earlier on and we've had children and now in my case the children have both moved out so my son moved out in the second lockdown around that time I'm trying to think when beginning 2022 he moved out um, my daughter moved out a few years before that so now I've got that extra time um, and I think you've had all those years of looking after other people not that I would ever begrudge that I absolutely love looking after my children um, and that was my job but um, you've got that time for yourself and I, don't, I think because you've spent all that time looking after other people all those years you don't feel too selfish now spending a little bit of time on what you feel passionate about and I don't think that you should I think you should enjoy this time think right I want to do what I want to do now um, and spend this time growing your art career and your art business so yeah that we've got patience we've got experience and we don't have that haste of youth and we do have that time just to be a bit more considered about where we're going with our career and I think really um, the way I, th I think I perhaps mentioned this in the other video I can't just remember but I think I think of it now as a little bit of a pension so that all the videos that you've made before all they just keep working for you because they're evergreen because the subjects where you're teaching people to draw or whatever that are going to be just as relevant in 10 years time or 20 years time than they are today um, is they're still going to make money so when you perhaps finish working later in life or when you want to take it a little bit slower you're still going to get that money in so you can think of it as a bit of a pension so I think we have the patience to put into that now to build up an art career um, and it's same with your paintings as well because you paint them now you might not sell them for 10 years you might still be selling prints from them in 10 years time you know these pictures may have gone and uh, be sold but then you still might be selling prints and greetings cards from those years down the line so we've got that patience and I think we can build up 
kind of a pension with this career. I think that's brilliant for that kind of thing. And thinking about all those videos working for you long, you know, years after you've made them. Um, and like I said the other day, some of my first ones are just awful, but I leave them there because they're still making money. Just imagine if Bob Ross had had his own um, YouTube channel in the 70s or whenever he was going. It, it must be 70s from that hairdo, I'm sure, or maybe 80s. I mean, I'm not putting myself on that level at all. But you imagine, you know, everybody is still watching Bob Ross. So many people are still learning how to paint from Bob Ross all these years later, from when he did those tutorials. So your tutorials that you do now could be getting watched in 10, 20, 30 years time and still generating that revenue. And the third reason I think that this is a great career to have later in life is that it's a career for life because you can do as little or as much as you want to. You could work flat out seven days a week both doing your paintings and your YouTube channel, whatever you want to do. Or you could do one day a week or anything in between. So it can be a full, completely full time career and it can be a part time career and you can reduce it as time goes on. For the reasons I've just talked about, because those videos and paintings are still there working for you, long after you've done them, long after you've put the time in creating those things, they're still making money for you. So I've got one image that I sold years ago, uh, sold the painting years ago, and it's still one of my best selling greetings cards and prints. So it's a long, long time since I did that painting, but it's still making me money. And the same as with the YouTube um, videos as well. So it's not a physical job really. I mean, I do uh, sometimes get a bad back and a bad shoulder when I'm working at the easel. When I'm doing larger paintings, I like to stand up and I'm moving my arm. Um, it's always a good tip really, because you make, you're not as tight if you're working from your wrist as if you're working from using your whole arm. So, but it isn't really a physical job. And I do joke about the fact that, we, you know, with the kids that when I'm 80 or 90, I can imagine I'm going to be able to sit at a drawing board very patiently with a great big sheet and do a very delicate, intricate drawing. Um, it's probably never going to happen. I'm probably never going to have the patience um, to do that kind of thing. My style isn't that, but you know, you never know. Um, what I'm saying is you can just sit and do as much or as little as you want and we're always going to be able to do that. So that was the, the last thing really. So there are all sorts of reasons really why you should start a career at any age. Um, because we should do what we enjoy. Um, if you can have a career doing something that you enjoy and don't, you know, and have a few string to your bows, strings to your bow as well. Um, if you put all your eggs in one basket, you're not going to perhaps have that, like we talked about, that pension of little bits of things coming in. So people talk about passive income online um, and you think, oh, that's, you know, can't work, it's never going to work. And it's not passive because you do you do have to put the initial hours in but when you've got lots of different ones coming in if one's not quite working one week another will be so for instance this month i've made more money on uh, amazon merch t-shirts than i perhaps have on youtube i'm not sure about sim probably similar but some months one will be more than the other is what i'm saying and so you've got those extra things making you that bit of a pension as you go along. So I'm piffling on a bit again now and digressing. Um, so we've got, those, we've got those three things, we've got the experience and the patience, we've got the fact that we've got not as much haste as we had when we were young and more time and we've got the fact that it's a career that can go on forever because we've got um, not a physical job that we can do as much or as little as we want. Okay, I hope you found that very useful. If uh, you want to ask anything at all, do put that down in the comments. Any links that are relative to what I've been talking about today, including those other videos, I will put in the description below. Um, if you want me to make more videos like this, please do ask and say so. Um, I'm trying out different things at the moment on YouTube, trying to build my YouTube channel and get it boosted a bit because I've spent a bit of time off YouTube. So do let me know what kind of videos you prefer um, and I'll try and do those for you. Okay, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Enjoy your own painting and drawing.